Okay. So what would be great would be to hear from each person um, something that you're taking from these ideas and discussions for yourself. Lots of you said you wanted to expand your, well, to expand your frame of reference, maybe, to expand your ideas. So can we, can we hear from each person? Perhaps a maximum of a minute each. And if I start on my bottom screen, Anand, you're at the bottom of my screen. Yes, Rosemary. Briefly to say that my last job in Canada was working with the Immigrant Serving Agency, and I had an opportunity to work with people from all over the world, from South Africa to, you know, Horn of Africa. And I changed over those 11 years of working, providing training, from my judgmental attitude, look at me, how well I've adapted or <laughs> adapted to Canada, to understanding people coming from different backgrounds. So the shift started there. But whereas coming back here, this was my first perspective. Small one. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. <laughs> coming back is a very difficult thing. Yes, re-entry is not Absolutely. easy. Absolutely. And there are people who specialize in working with people re-entering. So yes. great, you've expanded your frame. Yes. Um, I would love to connect with Rosemary and contact and spend more time to benefit from your perspective. <coughs> so we are running an intercultural summer school in Oxford uh, for TA people this summer um, because it's so interesting. There's so much more than these uh, two hours we can go to. Chantel, you're next on my screen. Um, I, I just wanted to express thanks to you for this notion of uh, how, uh, how our identities build, yeah, our cultural identities from gender all the way all the way through with different events, you know, going to school and then how some of these um, how, how some of these clash with one another and how we make sense of that. I'm really um, digesting that um, with a great deal of appreciation. Thank you. So right. I'm taking that away. And, and also just a sense of wonder and being able to meet in a room like this and have really intensive conversations with people from across the world. It's really magical. So thank you. Great. Mm. Thank you, Chantal. You expanded. Kirsty. Hmm. Um, there's a lot of taken away, um, which I won't go into, but just know there is a lot of taken away. <laughs> the one thing I guess I'm left reflecting on uh, is that acceptance, adaptation and integration. I always thought my frame of reference was quite large because I've done so much traveling in my life. Um, and I think that's true, but I'm wondering how much integrating I actually did. Yeah. Because in some contexts, I think I did, and in others, I think, oh, maybe I didn't. And is that okay? And does that leave me in that my culture's okay, your culture's okay space? Mm -hmm. Or does it move me into one of the other quadrants? I'm wondering. Okay. That sounds really interesting, food for thought. And... Mm -hmm. If I take you back to the idea of I'm okay, you're okay, mm -hmm. then it has to be okay with you when you experience yourself as not being okay. It's one of the conundrums in the I'm okay, you're okay space. Yeah? Yes. yes. So I just throw that in as well for your reflection. Oh. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. And be not okay, if you see what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I do, 100%. It's okay to be where I am. <laughs> At the existential level, absolutely. Inga, you're next on my, working my way up my screen. I don't know if it's the same for you, but... Um, I take away a different perspective, which is positive. So, um, I mean, you showed the, 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 the concept with the onion layers, I'd call it. Um, I all of a sudden had a very positive perspective saying, yes, it's not always triggering something in the past and uh, triggering through all the layers. I mean, it happens. But at the same point, 
um, there's a positive aspect that we can have an influence on what we integrate and what we take into as a new layer. So that's like my um, experience I had with UN Oxford and all the years we had together and with the groups and all that. So that's a very important layer which was put in on. And there's a distinct um, um, yes for that. So it's not by chance of our incidents, but it's, it's a chosen decision to do that. And that was an, a very positive um, perspective, which I never had in such a strong way um, in combination with having messages. So that was really nice. I think you touch on something there, Inga, which um, because a lot of us in the educated world have got a sort of simplistic version of a Freudian view, which it's all about history and it's all about going back to the original parents and particularly the mother, mm. that we mm. tend to see the, as if the past shapes our brain more, mm. the long past more than the recent past and the present. And it seems to be emerging from neuroscience that that's not the case. Mm -hmm. The current experiences, current contexts will influence our brain and our brain wiring as much as the original uh, early months or years will. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Johan, you're next on my, have I said your name right? Yeah, I, um, the, 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 the concept of uh, your culture is okay and my culture is okay. <clears throat> I think the, 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 the good thing for me uh, was the uh, reality or the uh, uh, come to a sense of awareness that the issue of integration or the concept of integration doesn't mean uh, you have to give up something to gain something. Yes. Uh, it, is, it is really a case of uh, reaching or uh, moving to a, a, another level of consciousness about um, the, the culture that I, that I represent, let's say, uh, and the culture that is different. And it also is a nice thought to have to be able to recognize the fact that I can actually, I have the capacity to accommodate both. Uh, and in that sense, uh, it makes uh, the adaptation so much easier. Uh, yeah. But I think the important thing for me, it is, it is not an either or scenario. Yeah, uh, that's a really great point. It looked like your wife wanted to say something from over your shoulder just now. Is she got anything she wants to add? <laughs> Yeah, great. Leo. Uh, yeah, I'm also going away with a lot of food for thought and something that I just realized during those discussions is that even though I've done so much work on culture, I'm still not sure what my culture actually is. So like with those holes in the piece of paper, I was just saying, I think I've got a piece of paper with lots of different holes in and I look through different ones at different times mm -hmm. and, and I can sort of explain them on a meta level and, but, but this, what is actually mine? Um, yeah, it's not quite clear for me at the moment. Oh. And is it, is it a, is it a matter of choice? Is it something that, yeah, who, who decides? Is it the past? Is it my parents? Is it where I, yeah, the whole history, do I choose it now? So yeah, I've got a lot of questions going on. <laughs> that sounds a really interesting place to be. Yes. I'm really fascinated by what you say there. And it's something about the many holes in your pieces of paper that you can look through, mm. which in one way sounds like the integrated place. Mm. If you somehow can hold them all together mm. some meta level schema yeah yeah very interesting mm. so wow. thank you yeah natalie you're next on my i'm feeling um, really inspired by, about by this discussion and it's really opened my mind um i think that i haven't i've never thought of um my view my perspective on culture in terms of the 
um, the life position. So that's a hugely valuable um, perspective to have now. Um, and I think that um, where this is most applicable to me is that I do lifeline counselling. Um, and when I'm seeing my face-to-face -face clients, they're often um, all from different cultures. And, um, and I always want to, to be respectful of their culture and to, to understand it, you know, to have a better understanding of it. Um, um, for example, with my one client recently, um, she came, every time she came into the session, she was looking down and she wouldn't look at me. And so, you know, I asked her whether she, she, she was feeling um, like she had low self-esteem. And then she explained to me that in her culture, that, that you need to respect someone that's older than you. So you won't look them in the eyes. And um, so then we, we went ahead with that and, you know, I accepted that and we integrated it and, um, so it's something that I've applied in practice, but I think just having this this model is um, hugely valuable to, I guess, have that awareness of where are you on on those life positions and where do you want to be. So thank you. You're very welcome. Rosemary, how about for you? Hi, Rosemary, you're mute. Yes, uh, yes, I'm just unmuting myself. It's been, uh, it's been very, very uh, thought-provoking uh, two and a half uh, hours for me here. And uh, especially Robert, uh, Danton Roberts, the layers got me thinking as to how much of these we are carrying within ourselves. And I also got reminded of the discussion that I was having with Dr. Susan a few days uh, ago about the process of opening up your frame of reference. Uh, do I really want to tear up a hole there or do I want to look at it through the netted or a semi-permeable membrane, because I do not want to lose the history that I carry with myself in the process of tearing it away. And therefore, do I, do I use my frame of reference, keep it to protect me, but also keep it semi-permeable so that I imbibe in and respect what is in front of me. So that's the thought I'm sitting with. Interesting. Mm. Alex. I'm feeling appreciative that we are right now um, a whole group of people from quite various cultures engaging with each other and learning from each other and feeling uh, privileged that I'm living in an age where that's possible. Um, and in the work that I do, how important it is to engage with people, or my clients, uh, who are from different cultures or even the same culture and see things in slightly different ways in an okay, okay space in order to help them grow. And through that, I grow myself. Um, absolutely. And I would, I would really want to echo that idea of constantly growing. And I think that is growing the, the space in the frame of reference. Rosemary, I'm not sure it means losing anything. I think it, the whole piece of paper can expand. So <laughs> you can really increase the frame of reference. I think that's what TA is about. It's what learning is about, is increasing our open frame of reference so that we can um, be available much more from an I'm okay, you're okay place. So we have to examine what's in our frame through the structural adult ego state. We have to make an ethical choice, what we keep, what we might let go of. I felt very frustrated at not being able to join any of you and have no sense of the buzz that was going on in the rooms. So this is the downside of this wonderful technology, which for you might have been great, but for me, I'm just sitting here on my own. <laughs> It's weird. It's weird. Fabulous to meet you all. Um, we are doing a whole week on this. We're doing six days, um, pretty much nonstop on advanced TA and culture in Oxford in June, which is why I think um, Karen wanted me to do this just so that people got a little taste of it. So, you know, two hours, six days, there's lots and lots more. So keep thinking and, creating engage if you want to an email with me 
I'm very welcome, very welcome to do that. Thank you, Alex, for sharing, if that's the right word, hosting. Yeah, you're welcome, and Rosemary, on behalf of our membership um, and the SATA Association, thank you so much. Um, it's been highly valuable for me, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing more. Great. Me too. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank, Thank you. Thank you very Bye -bye. much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.